Welcome to the session on Common Data Service Data Modeling. My name is Phil Toppis. I'm a Principal Program Manager with the PowerCAD team. Now you of course know about the features that the Common Data Service provides from the API level and foundations in security all the way out to the integration options provided at the edge. In this session we're going to focus on the center band focusing on data and the elements that make a successful data model in CDS and how data modeling in CDS differs from what you might have done in SQL Server or Oracle or a more fundamental data source. I'm going to focus on four things. One, how to reuse the common data model and the importance and value that will give you. And then how to extend those through fields and additional relationships or when you need to add your own custom entities the features of the common data service that you can use there. And then I'll talk about how you can use calculated and roll-up fields to summarize your data, saving work from plugins or flows, and also how to use the activity entity, a special type of entity for capturing real-life interactions. So one of the first principles is reuse. The common data model is a simple concept, but it seems universally misunderstood. The common data model is just that. It's a data model that has been built in collaboration with other companies and industries to provide a foundation for commonly used and stored data. It's intended to address a common problem in every business where data is either locked in different schemas or formats, either between companies that inter interact like suppliers and partners, or even between business units within a company, or even within business units or teams. And the net impact of this is that analysis and integration requires additional mapping and aggregation translation. And this is troublesome just for doing all sorts of integration work, but it especially impedes actions that need to be done in real time. And so it slows down or minimizes the benefits that you can get from AI and machine learning. Now before, each application would come into the environment with its own database, right? As you buy a software product that focuses on your people, and it focuses on finance, it comes with its own data structure, its own system, and they're isolated from each other. So as we were going through modernizing our infrastructure, we were often creating new digital silos at the same time. So, as each application needs to be connected to its data, and often as the organization grows, connections into other related data come into play as well. And the end result is an integration level, an integration layer that requires constant maintenance, adds complexities to the applications, and reduces the organization's overall visibility into its operation. And so the goal behind the common data model was to provide a shared data model where application connections can be simplified, data visibility is universal across the data source, redundancy is eliminated as much as possible while still retaining security for the records and entities themselves, and app developers and back-end integrators can operate independently, although it's still, of course, important to... Uh, communicate about data governance overall. Now you've probably already interacted with a common data model because you've used the account entity or the contact entity or some of these other opportunities from sales and service and so on. But the common data model extends these to get more specialized across application and industry specific uses. And Microsoft's own applications, like Customer Insights, are already built upon these standard entities. Now you could leverage the work that Microsoft is doing across industries and use the Common Data Model as a foundation for your own application. It's a big focus for the company right now, and you can benefit from the results of all this work. And you can see an example of the depth of these entities here. For this example, the Common Data Model Accelerator for media. 
and all of the fields here to give you a start for this type of industry. Or for healthcare, very relevant right now with all the COVID-related solutions that are being built. Right? So a common data model schema for a patient, for example. And also for education, right? So a list of standard fields for both K through 12 and higher education needs. So it's a terrific starting point, and then you'll be built on a foundation that will then be common with other people using the common data model, making it easier to interact and analyze data. So now let's talk about time when it's time to extend these entities or create your own entities. Calculated and roll-up fields, I think, are very underutilized in the common data service. And what they allow you to do is do real-time aggregation within a record with calculated fields and aggregation and summarization across records with roll-up fields. Now this is often, we'll see this done with plugins or with Power Automate to summarize across fields, but it could really be done with configuration just using calculated and roll-up fields. Calculated roll-up fields apply to many different types of data types. And on this slide, you can see the types of kind of fundamental data types for fields here, and then where calculated and roll-up fields apply. And this will be clear here when we look at an example of a calculated, calculated field. So here's an example of creating a calculated field that calculates the difference in days from when a record was created. And so what calculated fields do is they create a new field on the entity that is recalculated on demand on a form or in a view or when it is called via an API or a flow or in views or in dashboards. And so what this allows you to do is to get real time math or aggregation of strings or manipulation of numbers or dates like this example here. And these use a number of Excel like functions as well. So you can create relatively sophisticated calculations and have them readily available when you're qu querying your records. Roll-up fields are calculations across records, calculating aggregations of numeric values across multiple records and summarizing them into a single field. Roll-up fields run every 12 hours, updating their calculations based upon the latest values at that time. They can also be run on demand, and they use familiar Excel-like functions like sum and count and max and average. And also they can traverse relationships, which gives them a lot of uh, power all through configuration. Like here you can see that we're, we're using the account entity, but we're calculating the number of re emails, so related entity, that have been sent where this account is the to or CC relation, recipient. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just count up those emails and provide that value, the total number of emails, on the account entity. Now moving on to relationships, one of the many advantages of deploying your apps data on the common data service versus SharePoint or Excel is the ability to use real data relationships. Now SharePoint lists can, are often used related to each other, but the relationship isn't enforced by the data source itself. In the common data service, there are two types of relationships, one to n, or sometimes n to one, same type of relationship, depending on how it's viewed, and n to n, or many to many. One to n relationships, or one to many relationships, are when a record can be tied to one of a list of records. So when you look at the owner of a record, this is an example of this, although it's one that can be polymorphic, right? Because a user or a team can be an owner. End to end or many to many relationships are when one record can be related to many of another. So think about the relationship between users and teams in the common data service. A user can be on many teams and teams have many users. Now one to end relationships and end to one relationships are really the same type of relationship. The distance is depend the difference is depends on which side of the relationship you're viewing it from. And on the primary entity, what we store is just the ID of the related ent entity. For example, in this one, the venue can have multiple events. And so on the event entity, we would have an ID for the related venue. And you can see this as you look in the actual system here. So this relationship company name looks like a one to many on the contact and a many to one 
on the account. It's the same core relationship with the same relationship name. So in the UI, you'll see one-to-many relationships as a subgrid with the ability to add new or associate new records within that subgrid. And looking at it from the other side, it'll actually look like a lookup where you can look up the related entity and assign it to the single record. Now when you retrieve a one-to-end relationship in flow, you'll get back the GUID, right? That one, the, the ID that is stored on the single entity. Now you can use this then to do another get a record call to then pull back this entire record. Or you can use the expand query feature to specify the field that you want expanded, and then you'll get all of the fields back in the dynamic content. Now, a lot of people look at a one-to-end relationship and they think they look a lot like option sets, but there are a few important differences to be aware of between option sets and one-to-end lookups. For one thing, option sets always show the same list of options. So you can't filter them, you can't use views, you'll always see the same list when they're used. And when you need to remove an option set through you know, something that needs to be retired from your application, it's not a straightforward way of doing that. However, one advantage of option sets is if you need to localize the option set labels, you can do that with the existing localization structure as part of Power Platform within the Common Data Service. Now lookups, as we discussed, use related entities. You can store other data on that entity too, like here we're showing the email address, and this of course is a contact record, has many more data fields on there. And so that allows you to provide some contextual data as the person is selecting the related record. record. And of course, you can use these. Uh, you can use uh, entity, or you can use views to filter these out, and you also get type ahead, which will help them kind of select uh, the available records that match what the person's typing. However, because these are entities and these are data fields on a record, you aren't able to use localization structure to localize these. So, if you need these labels to be localized, you'll need to handle that in a different way yourself. When it comes to retrieving option sets in Flow, there's a couple different behaviors between the current environment connector for CDS and the normal out of solution uh, CDS connector. And so one thing to know is when you, when you use the current environment connector, you will only get the ID of the option set, which is fine because most of the time you're comparing whether a certain option set is there and you should use the ID because the labels could easily change through configuration. However, if you want to use the labels to include them in an email or somehow present them to the user, those aren't returned in the current environment connector right now. Those are only returned in the CDS connector. So now let's talk about end-to-end -end relationships. End-to-end -end relationships are between items of two lists, like events and attendees using the contact, uh, contact entity as shown here. Now in practice, this is implemented the way you would do so in a database with an entity that serves as an intersect entity, mapping the ID of one list, an event, to the other, a contact. Now this intersect entity exists in the common data service, but you can't interact with it, you can't query it. Now you can simulate this on your own by creating your own intersect entity. And there are times when you may want to do that by creating a one-to-end -end relationship between your own entity and the two that you're trying to relate. It does have the advantage that you can use this intersect entity and access it directly and store additional data about the relationship on there. So here you can see an example of an end-to-end -end relationship. The hidden intersect table here is holding pointers to the IDs, they're abbreviated IDs here, not actual GUIDs, between hungry person number one and establishment number one, and so on. So this is a representative of the type of table that exists in the common data service between the two. Now in this example, the intersect entity is created explicitly. That allows us to track an additional field here, spend, which could be a calculated field, 
and attract other properties of the relationship between establishments and hungry people. Now keep in mind though, when you create a structure like this, there isn't a direct relationship, as far as common data service is concerned, between hungry people and establish establishments. You need to manage that in your application. And also some UI components, like the model-driven subgrids, they won't recognize this because you have a custom intersect entity. End-to-end -end lookups bear similarities to multi-select option sets, but there are differences in the functionality that kind of mirrors what we saw between option sets and one-to-end -one, one -to relationships. One important thing to know is that in multi-select option sets, the values are stored on the record as an array of option set IDs. It makes them much harder to work with if you need to do analysis on the selected options. But because multi-select options are option sets, they benefit from the same localization benefits that we talked about before, but the same difficulties with trying to remove an entry in a thorough way. Now looking at retrieving multi-select option sets in flow, there's also differences between the CDS current environment connector and the regular or the out of solution common data service connector. And the big difference here is you actually get the array of option sets back in the, in the current environment connector and they are not returned in the other connector. So if you're going to work with multi-select option sets, you will want to use the current environment uh, connector, which will require you to be working in a solution, which is a good practice anyways. But just know that you will get the values back, but they'll be an array and then you'll need to manipulate them further in your flow. Or if you want to get the actual labels that correspond to those values, you'll need to then use a flow to map them to the actual labels in the string map table or the string map entity, which will then correspond to each one of those entities and the localized label that it represents. One of the benefits of relationships in the common data service is you can control how related entities interact during key events like a deletion, sharing, reparenting, changing the owner, assignment, and unshare. And you have several choices. The first one is referential, remove link, which means that they basically are independent. Actions taken on one side of the relationship will not affect the other. There's also referential restrict delete, which means actions taken on the parent record will not be applied to the child record but while the parent but the parent record cannot be deleted while there is a child record related to it. And then there's a type called parental, which means that any action taken on the record of the parent is also cascaded down to the child records. And you can customize these two by creating your own custom type of behavior and then choosing how you want each one of those five properties to respond during one of those events. Another less known feature is the ability to map fields between related entities. You can map attributes between entities that have a mappable entity relationship. And this lets you set default values for a record that is created in the context of another record. You can map entity fields for a one-to-end one -to entity relationship and certain items from the primary record will be copied into the new related entity to set default values. And you've seen this if you've gone into an account and created a contact within the context of the account, you've seen the account's address get copied into the contact record. Finally, for real life interactions, consider creating, creating custom activity entities to model them. Activities are meant to represent real life interactions and they typically have a date and time element. All activities will share some common fields because they all resolve the activity pointer table. And here we can see some typical out of the box activities, appointment, email, phone call, task, and even donation now. These are automatically all aggregated on the timeline control. And as you add custom entities, they'll be shown on the timeline control as well. And they can also be used on views that are using the calendar control so that you can see them laid out in a calendar. To use an activity entity, when you're creating a new entity, you choose you set activity entity under create entity type. And an example of how this can be used, I was on a project building a system for probation officers, and we created custom activities for drug screenings and home visits 
two types of activities that probation officers would do in real life to track for the people they monitor. So I hope you found some new features of the Common Data Service that you haven't yet leveraged. The goal of this session was to help you use these features in the way that you can focus on building your application and even do even less automation, even less no-code automation, so that you can focus on the other features your customers need.